Hello everybody, welcome to Sure Shot Archery, Anthony here, and in this video, we're going to be testing out four different veins and five arrows in total. And we're going to see if uh, the rotation of the arrow is changed, uh, you know, based on the vein as we, you know, slowly walk back from the target. Now, before I get started in this test, I do want to thank uh, one of our subscribers, Alan, for uh, bringing out this uh, idea. Uh, he commented in uh, one of the Griffin Vein videos. He was interested to see how the Griffin Veins uh, rotated compared to other veins and things like that. So I decided to make this a full-on test, and uh, now I'm going to go and explain what we're doing here. So behind me here is this nice sheet of paper with five different categories. We start with the bear shaft, we then go to the spin wing, we then have the Griffin vein, the K and K Jet 6 SV vein, and the Brady vein, or the 702 spider veins, as they're also called. We will be seeing how each of these rotate. The bear shaft is kind of going to act like our control in this experiment because we can, base all, we can base the rotations of the other veins kind of based on what the bear shaft does. So if we keep walking back and the bear shaft doesn't rotate at all, then we can kind of compare them to that. If it rotates some, then we can also see how much more an arrow rotates based on the veins that it has. Of course, this is only four veins on the market and there is many out there. And these veins are being shot out of a 46 pound Olympic recurve bow, so this may vary a little bit based on your type of bow and the poundage and things like that, but it should provide a pretty good idea on how veins affect arrow rotation, and we're gonna try to measure it per meter. Now, for measuring this per meter distance, uh, the first test, the first arrows we're going to shoot, we're actually shooting from two meters away because I have a stabilizer on my bow. And if I shoot from one meter away, I can't actually shoot the arrow because my stabilizer will touch the target. It, it's not going to work very well. So the first tests are starting uh, from two meters away, and then after that, every single test will be one meter away. I will be straddling uh, the line, so the one meter distance will technically be between me going up the middle, so the front half of my body will be in front of it, so do take that into consideration, but we aren't doing just one test. I have several laid out here, and we'll also be jumping back to 10 and 25 meters, so we should get a good feel for this. If we need to go further, we will, but I think we'll get a pretty good idea just from those distances. Okay, so let's begin our test. I'm going to be shooting these in order, unless I make a mistake. So, bear shaft, spin wing, griffin vein, SV, Brady vein. And that should be the order that we're going to maintain through this entire test. So I'll shoot them all, walk down, mark how they land, and we'll uh, repeat. <laughs> just got done the first uh, set here and what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to be using the little nib that sticks out on uh, the Easton uh, X10 pins. Those pin knocks have a little bump on them and I'm going to be using that bump to index uh, you know, where they start and where they've moved to. So uh, the way I set up all my arrows is that I have that little bump, that little nib on the knock actually stick out and it sticks out this way from uh, the rest of the bow so it sticks out nice and straight so any variation from that we should be able to see our rotation because that's going to be our starting point
Okay, so now let's take a look at our first end here. Uh, the bear shaft moves from nine o'clock, which is its starting position. Like all these arrows, they all start at nine o'clock. It moved to about 10 o'clock. Uh, the spin wing has moved to about 11 o'clock. The griffin vane is still at nine o'clock or the starting point, as we've been calling it. Same thing with the Jet 6 SV vein. Uh, that is also starting, or staying at, 9 o'clock. And for the Brady 702 Spider vein, uh, we've moved all the way over to about uh, 5 o'clock. So it's going to be interesting to see, uh, as I shoot a few more uh, sets here, how these arrows uh, rotate, or maybe some of these won't rotate at all, which will be maybe even more interesting, uh, because the general consensus is, is that they, they should probably rotate to a degree. So we'll see if they end up staying in the same position. I highly doubt they're making a full rotation before they hit the target, especially when I'm only shooting from you know, a couple meters away. But uh, we'll find out. I, I think time will tell as we walk back. Alright, end number two is finished. Our bear shaft has moved, well, one time it has moved to 11 o'clock uh, instead of 10 o'clock. Our spin wing, though, has moved all the way around to 6 o'clock from 11 o'clock. The griffin vein has moved from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock. It's only a little bit. The Jet 6 SV has followed suit, moving from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock. And the Brady 702 Spider Vein has moved from 5 o'clock to 11 o'clock. All right, so round number three, we just got done marking all of these. Our bear shaft is still at 11 o'clock. Our spin wing has moved from six o'clock all the way to two o'clock now. The griffin vein has moved to seven o'clock from 10 o'clock, so pretty far around. Jet 6 SV has moved to 8 o'clock. It was previously at 10 o'clock, so again, pretty good rotation going on there. And the 702 Brady Vane has moved to 12 o'clock from 11 o'clock. So, more than a full vein rotation, if I have that correct, because it was at 11 o'clock before, and it's gone all the way around past 11 and hit 12. All right, so time uh, to go and do uh, set number four, and that will be moving us back to five meters.
Okay, so for end number four, set number four, we have the bear shaft uh, going to 10 o'clock from 11. Now, these numbers keep bouncing back and forth between 10 and 11, and I think it's just how the bear shaft's coming out of the bow, just where it's vibrating in the shot, making it land in the 10 or 11. Um, I really don't think it's rotating all the way around, but I don't know, we'll, we'll see how it goes, especially once we get further back. Uh, the spin wing is at five o'clock, it moved from two o'clock. Uh, the griffin vein has moved to six o'clock from seven o'clock, so full rotation almost. Uh, the Jet 6 SV has moved to two o'clock from eight o'clock. And the Brady 702 has moved to one o'clock. Alright, so end number five is in the books. It's all marked out. Our bear shaft is at 10 o'clock. Uh, <laughs> our spin wing is at 1 o'clock. Uh, it moved from 5 o'clock, so pretty good rotation. Uh, the griffin vein is at 7 o'clock from 6 o'clock. Uh, the SV vein from Jet 6 is at 3 o'clock. And the Brady 702 spider vein is at 11 o'clock. All right, it's, it really makes its way around. Um, this is where we're gonna stop shooting uh, the short distances. I'm gonna jump from six meters to 10 meters, and then probably from there to 25 meters, just to see if there's uh, a greater change. All right, here we are, all the way back at 10 meters. <laughs> Uh, this will be interesting actually. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see you know what happens. You know we may rotate a lot more just because we, we did make a jump of four meters so I don't know. we'll see we'll see. So uh, let's begin bear shaft again as usual. Okay, so we got all our marks. So yes, nine o'clock for the bear shaft. It was at 10 previously. Uh, basically, this is the most it's, it's changed because it's, well, besides the start of it. Again, they all start at nine o'clock here. Uh, so the most it's moved is to 11 o'clock. Uh, the spin wing though is at three. It moved there from one o'clock. Now, I'm thinking it's a full rotation, uh, but, Really, you, you probably need a slow motion camera, like a real slow motion camera. Um, but uh, with the Griffin veins here, we move to 10 o'clock. Uh, SV veins, nine o'clock. And Brady veins, seven o'clock, previously at 11 o'clock. So definitely, d there's definitely rotation in the veins. Um, you know, I know I'm saying that there's probably no rotation in the bear shaft. Uh, it's a bear shaft. It probably shouldn't be rotating coming out of your bow, 
And if it is, it shouldn't be a lot. If, if these veins are not rotating a full turn, there's no way the bear shaft's rotating a full turn when shot from the same distance. Otherwise, you wouldn't bother shooting veins for the most part, because your, your bear shaft would be spinning so tight and so fast, it, it would outpace all these veins, especially up to, uh, to most of the distances so far. So that's why I think the bear shaft doesn't move. It just depends on where it's wiggling, where you're going to hit uh, on your mark, and it may very vary by a, you know, a couple, couple degrees. Uh, but the rest of these, I definitely feel all these arrows are rotating, but they're each rotating to a uh, you know, different degree. Uh, now let's move back to, uh, was it 25 meters? And check that out uh, because, well, Alan asked. So Alan gets what he asked for. <laughs> we'll find out uh, if that actually makes a difference. We got some space left here, so I'm gonna try to fill that in. Okay, so that was our last test at 25 meters. Made a, made a, made a little foo pa here, kind of. That, that arrow was, it was supposed to go here. All right, so bear shaft, nine o'clock again. Spin wing, three o'clock, and it was three o'clock before. So it definitely went around at least once. Uh, Griffin vein, nine o'clock, was 10 o'clock before. So maybe it didn't make it all the way around. Um, two o'clock for the SV vein, and for the 702 Brady vein, uh, one o'clock. So pretty interesting results. Um, again, once you started getting to this, you know, six, uh, 10 meter and 25 meter at set six and seven, it's kind of hard to tell how many rotations they're actually making because the distance is increasing a lot. So, with that, we could probably go through each one of these and, uh, and check them out individually. Um, just eyeballing it real quick here, I would say uh, the Griffin veins probably spin the less, the least, uh, the less, the least. Um, obviously the bear shafts are control. I don't think it really spun at all. I think it just kind of, kind of maybe it rocked a little back and forth as it's, you know, as it's flexing, which would make sense. Um, and then probably up next, I would say maybe the SV veins, the Jet 6 SV veins and the spin wings are probably pretty close. I think Brady's veins spun the most, I don't know, really interesting test. I think, I think the way to improve this would be to tie it in with um, a very slow motion camera to see how much uh, the veins are actually spinning and to see how far you could actually track that. I don't know. Maybe something in the future. But before I wrap this up, I will do some math on here yeah. <laughs> and, and see how close they are, you know, see who, who rotated the most. All right, so math has been done here and we figured out the vein rotations going on. So all the veins started at the starting position of nine o'clock because that's where that little nib on the Easton pin knocks, you know, sticks out on mine. They're all the same. So when we got to two meters, uh, there was no change out of the bear shaft. The spin wing though, and the spider vein uh, did change. Uh, the spin wings moved about one sixth of a rotation and the spider veins moved about a half rotation. So halfway to a full rotation, pretty impressive. Uh, the Jet 6 and the Griffin really didn't move at all. Uh, when we stepped further back to three meters, Bear shaft stayed the same, but we got some rotation out of uh, the spin wing and the spider veins. The spin wings moved to 23 25ths 
of a rotation. If I, uh, if I did that correctly. Um, and uh, the spider veins went all the way to a full rotation. So pretty impressive there. Uh, again, Griffin and SV veins moved barely anything at all. Uh, at 4 meters, uh, we did get some more movement across the board. Uh, the swing wings moved at 4 meters, uh, 1 and 1 half rotations. Griffin, about 1 rotation. Jet 6 SV, about 1 rotation. And this was kind of accounting in for this, the slight rotation they got at 3 meters. Again, this is all calcul we're calculating this from the starting position. It's not per meter. So if, uh, for example, if the spider veins move um, a half of rotation at two meters, they should move a probably a full rotation at three meters, and it kind of kind of builds off of that, uh, you know, to a to a degree. So uh, that means at four meters we had two rotations two full rotations from the spider veins. Uh, that's pretty impressive and they're really starting to outpace a lot of the other veins. Uh, we move back to five meters. We got two and one fourth rotations out of the spin wings, one and five six from the griffin, one and one half from the uh, SV veins, and three and one third rotations from the spider veins. So uh, there's definitely a good clear first and second going on here between the spider veins and spin wings and a pretty close tie, in my opinion, between the Griffin veins and the Jet 6 SV veins for third place. Um, at 6 meters, uh, we wrap it up with uh, the Griffin and the Jet 6 veins essentially kind of tied for third. Again, uh, very hard to calculate their rotation. They just didn't seem to really want to move. And it seemed like every other distance, for the most part, they actually like rotated. I don't know if they were actually making full rotations, but we were only moving one meter at a time. There's only so, you know, I guess I could move like a half a meter at a time, but I, I don't think, I don't know if that would really help. I don't know, maybe we could do that again in the future, but then coming in second place, we do have the spin wings with two and one third rotations. Uh, by the time you hit six meters, pretty impressive. But the spider veins, the Brady spider vein 702s take it home four full rotations at six meters so that means that that arrow spawned full full times by from it leaving my bow to hitting the target six meters away so that arrow is really spinning and that should really add into just the stability and uh, ac overall accuracy of that arrow um, at least that is you know a pretty well understood point uh, in archery you want an arrow that rotates because that usually is a better thing especially when you're talking about shooting in the elements and shooting at long distances like 70 meters now some of that may not be as important shooting short distance then again we do shoot feathers indoors but i have not calculated how much rotation you know feathers give you so maybe that's something i should play around with and see what happens there but overall uh very interesting and uh, I think this is a, a really fun uh, test to do for these veins. So that's the numbers I found. I did not include the readings from 10 meters and 25 meters, just because we jump so much space, the, the variables change too much. Like I can't tell how many times these arrows rotated from six meters to 10 meters. Maybe if I kept going from six meters all the way back to 25 meters, one meter at a time, uh, then we, we could get there. But uh, that's a lot. I honestly spent uh, an entire day doing this between you know recording this properly and you know setting up all the cameras because I wanted this done right for everybody. Um, and I just tried to make it the most scientific I could and try to eliminate as many variables I could. Uh, it was a very, very nice calm day, no wind. Um, I did everything in, in one setting from the start to beginning. We didn't really uh, you know, take a break besides you know, to adjust you know, where I was standing. But I only shot five arrows, so it wasn't like I was overworked on any of these. Um, and it was also my second round of shooting for the day. I, shot, I started shooting this after lunch. 
I set up most of it in the morning and I had shot already some at 70 meters in the morning so it's not like I was I was cold I had already started shooting for the day and it's pretty nice and warm outside so the muscles are feeling great but at the same point in time still got jeans on so it's not overly hot either so with that I really hope you guys enjoyed this video I really did put in a lot of effort for it so thank you so much for watching you know please be sure to subscribe and like this video so that way more archers can go and check this out uh, it really promotes it and tries to get it out to the archery community if you like the video other than that be sure to follow me on uh, Instagram I'm always putting up interesting archery uh, photos and such up there and other than that thank you so much and as always happy shooting and thank you to my patreons <laughs>